So cold wax is like lard. That's how I describe it. Looks like lard. It's a combination of beeswax and solvent and depends on the brand. Uh, might have some other waxes in it, microstyline or, or some other types of things. But Gamblin is probably the purest wax that there is. And um, so some of you are curious about cold wax and hot wax. Not to be confused. Cold wax is, lives up to its name. It's cold. You do not fuse it. You should not fuse it. It has solvent in it. It's a way to create a fire. Yeah. <laughs> Hot wax, on the other hand, is beeswax with some resin in, and it is fused and must be fused, and it's worked in a molten state. So I will pass this around so that you can take a closer look at it. It comes in lots of different sizes. Bonnie carries it here in her store, and um, she special orders for me by the gallon um, because this little container doesn't last me too long but it's a good size to get started on. So you must mix it with oil paint. That's why it's called cold wax and oil. Um, oil and water don't mix, right? So that's the reason uh, you, you need to mix it with oil. However, yes? Can we mix it with water soluble oil paint? Yes, good question. You can mix it with water soluble oil because it's still oil paint, it's an emulsion, it's an alkyd. It means it's, um, you're able to wash it with water, but it's still oil paint, so that's fine. Um, you can also mix the cold oil with other powdered uh, pigments, so just plain powdered pigment or these little mica powders, uh, graphite powder, charcoal powder, all of those things you can mix in with the the cold wax as well. Why use cold wax and not just straight oil paint? Because it's different. It's kind of more for a mixed media type of artist. Uh, a lot of artists working with it are using it more abstractly. Myself, I don't use any brushes at all, but you can. It tends to be a bit heavy for brushes, so most people using doing brushwork are adding more solvent, and the solvent is Gamvar that you would use, which is also from Gamblin. Um, so the ratio of mixing, I've already mixed some up here um, just to save some time. So um, what I do, and if, I'm not sure you can see this, but I've got a blob of cold wax in the center of my palette, and then I put out my colors around it, and I mix them 50-50 approximately. That is the ratio. So I'm just gonna go ahead and blend my red with the cold wax and what happens when when you mix it like it it changes the feel and the consistency of the of the paint it's um, and you get to know how much you like you can use less you can use more too um, I also keep a sheet or a hardboard beside me to scrape this off And um, just instead of wasting so many paper towels, I'm actually starting a painting there. This is a painting, and it's still a little bit soft. It's in here upside down. Um, this started out like what I'm doing right now. Okay, I did it. I did it yesterday just to try and warm up. I haven't been painting much for the last bit because I've been doing markets, so uh, <laughs> definitely haven't been painting with wax and oil. This is not something that friendly to take to market. It's not that friendly to get home in your car, let's put it that way, when you have a car full of stuff. So I'm just going to mix these now. I know, please ask any questions. What paint are you using? What brand of paint? Yes. I am using today uh, Lucas paint, which is just on the wall behind you. You don't need expensive paint um, to use with cold wax. Uh, so buying a starter set is good or um, buy a big tube of white though. 
because you always need way more white. I got a big pile of it. Okay. You said if you needed more solvent to use Gambar, did you not mean Glam Sol? Yes, yeah, sorry, Gambar is the varnish, sorry, yes. Yeah. Gamsol. Gam, like gambling and solvent. G A M S O L. Gamsol. Okay, um, so let me show you how uh, I would mix some powder pigment. Okay, I have no clue what I'm doing, so we'll say that I'm going to use some copper. So I'm just going to get a bit of wax on my brush, plus, I got some other color on it, so let's get rid of that. Okay, so I'm going to take a bit of this. I have wax on my brush because this is powder. And on my palette knife, I should say. Mm -hmm. May I move your water bottle? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Just put it down on the floor. So by putting the wax on the palette knife, you're not going to get that um, powder going all over the place. It's much safer for your lungs as well. And what is the powder you're using? This is mica powder. Mica. And um, Bonnie, you carry this, do you? Yeah. yeah. So you can look at it. That's teal. Okay, so what to paint on? You need a hard substrate. So that means a board, not a canvas. You can use <coughs> canvas board. You can also use paper and this is a good paper to choose as Arches oil paper. That's what I'll be using today. Um, you could also use 300 pound watercolor paper as well. Um, Terraskin, a heavier Terraskin paper does work, but a, a lightweight ripples. So if you're curious about what colors I put out on my palette today, I will tell you. I have yellow ochre, carmine, red, and Thalo blue, so I have a primary palette with some white and black, and I threw in a couple bonus colors, um, turquoise, and what do they call this one? <coughs> oh, there it is. There's so many languages on here. <laughs> Cinnabar green. Okay, so those are the colors that I put up. So, any questions so far? You don't need much powder, eh? You don't need much of the paint powder, Micah? No. Just mix it till it has some color. Okay, so let's talk a bit about tools. So, tools, if you're not going to um, use a brush, if you're going to work um, more intuitively, scrapers are the deal. So, the catalyst blade works really well. I like this a lot because it's ergonomic and uh, it fits in your hand nice. I pass this around, but I'm going to use it, but Bonnie has some over there on an aisle, I think. This is a Messermeister, and don't ask me to spell it, please. <laughs> Messermeister uh, bowl scraper. Yeah. And uh, it works quite nice because it has a really soft edge to it. It's silicone. The only place I know to buy it is Amazon. It, um, it's not ergonomic, however. It's thin, and I find my hand gets tired using it. Any of these type of catalyst blades with little notches are wonderful. Any of these color shaper brushes, which are silicone, are nice. These all work with acrylic paint too, so you can use them on both mediums. Any kind of metal tools that you might have for mark making work good. This I believe might be a core or something. I got it at, in a bin at the used store. Um, if you're really desperate and you don't have a bowl scraper or catalyst blade, this works. I had to do a workshop, all supplies and tools included for about 20 people. And I'm like, holy crow, can I use a credit card or, you know, card key? No, that doesn't work. So I'm like racking my brain. So I went to the dollar store and I found the spatula. And so then the important thing is the handle must be able to come out because you don't want the handle. So um, I'm frigging around in the back of the store and I was probably thinking, what is that woman doing? <laughs> Putting them in her bag. <laughs> anyway, this turned out to work quite well. So um, that's another, another thing you could use. Um, sil silicone type of tools from the kitchen store work nice to make marks and lines as well. 
and a brayer, a soft brayer comes in handy to put down paint. Bamboo skewer, one of my favorite tools, but it could be a knitting needle. Any type of thing that you can press into it for texture, uh, bottom of meat trays, carpet underlay, uh, you name it, you can use it. Bubble wrap. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about safety. This stuff has solvent in it, which means it is flammable, which means you can actually burn your studio down. It's not cool. Tin can with a lid. Pile them in there, soak them with water so they don't start a fire. Or use a big metal garbage can. Alrighty. Um, other things you can do for substrates, just a hardboard, inexpensive. Um, you can coat it with a coated gesso. You could start applying cold wax and oil over an acrylic painting as well. Um, so you start your underpainting just like any oil painter might do. But there's one, I think, difference, and that is you should coat it with clear gesso. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is to give it a bit of bite so the wax will adhere to it nicely. <laughs> Other things you could do to prep your canvas is use plaster. Uh, I use Venetian plaster. Um, it's not that easy to get anymore, but uh, you can use various types of plaster. Alrighty. I did make myself a few notes here. Um, anybody have any questions yet? Uh, Pat, could you use pastel ground for instead of plaster? <coughs> a pastel ground. Um, yeah, very likely. Mm -hmm. I've never tried it. Because it has a, it's a bit sandy, so yeah. Like, yeah. I've actually used some acrylic um, pastes as well like mm -hmm. crackle paste and um, mm -hmm. that type of thing because it's fairly absorbent even though it might have a bit of acrylic in it it seems to be fine it hasn't done anything weird yet so let's get started so i am going to just do something quickly here as a bit of a warm-up how's our time okay so This. What, are you, what are you painting in there? Is it a this? Board? Oh, this. This is a little board. I'm just oh, going to quickly do something on. Um, yeah, I'm going to do it on this just plain board. Um, this green is just unbelievably green. intense. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to mix a little bit of color over here. So do you guys know how to knock back a green? Mm. This is not so intense. Add red. Probably put a bit too much in there, so it's going to be a little bit of a brownie green, ready green, a little bit of white to it, a little more green. Yeah, that green's out of the tube. I I very seldom use without doctoring them. So knowing how to doctor, right? Okay, so that's pretty good. And again, I'm just continuing on my abstract over here as well. Okay, I'm gonna use some blue. And I'm gonna use, let's see, I'm gonna add a bit of white to this. And let's see, a bit of teal. So I'm just mixing down some of these colors so I have a little bit more um, uh, value shift instead of just using my pure colors there. And maybe I'll use a little bit of gold. Mixing color is kind of the boring part of the, the thing here. Okay, let's go. So I am going to start by just start putting some of this on here. And 
and so this would be um, you know working wet and wet that's what I'm doing today wet and wet so so ala prima okay so we have this covered also got some on there it was not my intention so I like to use a few I didn't bring a ton of scrapers today but I like to have a few few scrapers so I don't have to clean them in between and um, then I can just keep a scraper designated for the color I'm using and that works well so I'm just going to put a piece of wax paper over this paper with some paint on it apparently yes did you know that oil paint has a way of just getting everywhere that's how it goes Okay, so I could press some marks into this now too if I wanted. And I'm just going to start building this up. I'm not cleaning my. Um, Sprayer in between here, or my scraper, I should say. So you can blend a lot, but you know, you can over blend too, so you got to be careful about that. So the thing with wax is it tends to be a little more uh, slick, I guess, than just paint on its own. It's kind of bulked up a bit. Okay, my horizon line was a little bit too low there. Got to make a correction. Everything has wax in it. it has, Everything has wax. Everything. Every bit of it has wax. How long does it take a wax painting to dry? That depends on a lot of factors. One being the humidity, um, how thick you put it on, what your ratio of wax is, um, so many things. But um, the one I passed around in the paper, I did yesterday. Okay. So there's, there's different uh, levels of dryness. So there's dry to the touch, and then there's dry and hard. And I'll, I'll pull out a previous board that I've done to show you dry and hard. Okay, so I'm gonna make a few marks in this. Just So the, the first layer was blue, if you recall. And it's, um, it sinks in pretty fast. So my good old trusty bamboo stick. I'm using it like a um, pencil. Are. I don't think I can pass this around because you guys will all be going home with oil paint on you. <laughs> yeah. So. Nice. Yeah. So just a fast little uh, sketch. <laughs> 